Project Veritas is an organization started oh, 10, 15 years ago, something like this maybe, um, basically to do undercover investigative reporting. Um, and uh, they had someone apparently go on a date this week with a guy named Jordan Tristan Walker, who's an MD and the director, Worldwide R&D Strategic Operations and mRNA Scientific Planning at Pfizer. Uh, he's had that title since 2021, uh, Walker has. Um, and so the, the Project Veritas guy who uh, is, is not seen on camera, you can hear him, uh, is pretending to be on a date with Walker and basically asking him open-ended and leading questions about what is happening uh, at, at Pfizer. So just a few more things about Walker before we do some, some quotes and talk about what we, what we think is going on here. Uh, Walker was a consultant at BCG, that's the Boston Consulting Group. Um, before uh, he was the worldwide R&D strategic operations and mRNA scientific planning director at Pfizer, uh, which is itself interesting. Uh, you know, he's, he's a consultant guy, uh, which is consistent with something he says in the second video that Project Veritas releases um, when he's uh, sort of gone into um, scared and trying to fix the problem he's just created for himself and for everyone mode. Um, and then he got his medical degree, it looks like, in, in 2018. So, you know, he does have a medical background, but it seems like mostly he's been doing consulting and sort of strategic planning for, for Pfizer. So, um, like I said, YouTube removed their video for a, guess what, violation of their community guidelines. We've been there um, without any more specificity, at least, that has been shared uh, with us publicly. Um, but the video is still up on Rumble. So, uh, you basically have a, uh, there must be a hidden camera in like the guy's glasses or something uh, showing uh, Walker, again, the, the, the consultant medical doctor at Pfizer, saying, for instance, quote, you know how the virus keeps mutating? One of the things we're exploring is why don't we just mutate it ourselves so we could preemptively develop new vaccines. So this would seem to imply that Pfizer would be mutating viruses and then releasing them into the world so that their newly developed vaccines would then be effective. But um, that seems even too far for Pfizer. Well, it, I have to say I was alarmed when I saw this interaction because what he says they are doing does not make sense. I'm not going to just share the rest of the quotes then yeah. before you respond. Why don't, why don't you share the rest of the quotes? Okay. Um, as you can imagine, Walker continues, no one wants to be having a pharma company mutating fucking viruses. The anonymous state says, so Pfizer is ultimately thinking about mutating COVID? Walker, well, no. no. Well, that's not what we say to the public, no. It was a thought that came up in a meeting and we were like, why do we not? It was like, we're going to consider that with more discussions. Then Walker says a little later, the way it would work is we would put this virus in these monkeys and then we successfully cause them to keep infecting each other. And we collect, I'm actually gonna gray out the extra words here to make it easier to hear what he's saying. And we collect samples from them. And then the ones that are more infectious, we'll put them in another monkey and then just constantly actively mutate it. So yep. I don't know if you wanna hear all the things. Like, well, let's, let's, let's stop there. Okay. This, is, this is the thing that threw me. Yeah. Okay. So that that is serial passaging is what he's talking about. He is talking about yeah. serial passaging in monkeys to make the virus more infectious. Now, this does not add up as stated. Yep. And so there's a question. This guy appears to be, we can debate how high level he is, but he does appear to be at the top of some sort of uh, directorate of mRNA. So, all right, he's involved in strategy, but he's deeply inside of Pfizer, mm -hmm. dealing with the mRNA technology, telling us that they are doing serial passaging with the virus, but it is not obvious why Pfizer would want to do that. So uh, I want to make the biology a little bit clear. Not only doesn't it, isn't it clear why Pfizer would want to do that, it's not like it's not clear why Pfizer would want that result, and it's and it's really not clear. I mean, it's actually clear that that approach to getting that result would not garner that result. Like well, that, the, the science is just wrong. Well, as right. stated, 
I think it's nonsense. It seems like, to be nonsense. actual nonsense. Yeah. And the reason that I say that is let's compare to what was done, we think, in Wuhan. Okay? Mm -hmm. In Wuhan, you had a viral ancestor taken from a bat cave, probably a mine. Um, the viral ancestor, we are extrapolating a little bit from a complex story some of you will know, but that viral ancestor was weakly capable of infecting humans, but not capable of jumping between them. Okay. That ancestor brought into the lab in Wuhan, we think, was then probably serially passaged through human airway tissue, that's cells, and in vitro human mm -hmm. airway tissue, humanized mice. These are mice that have been molecularly altered so that they f function from the virus's perspective as a human background, uh, and ferrets. Those are the three likely candidates. Now, in that case, you're taking a bat-adapted virus and then you are exposing it to environments that will enhance its function relative to human infectivity. Just let's say also ferrets for reasons that I don't, must be interesting, and I don't know what the explanation is, are immunologically very similar to humans and actually more similar than most monkeys would it's be. It's not immunologically. Okay. It's the ACE2 receptor. Oh, it's just the ACE2 receptor. Right. And with regard to monkeys... Uh, do, are they all? I mean, he it's only says monkeys, and you know, it's a good they're question, presumably not looking at tamarins. But so for I don't, our purposes, right. it doesn't matter. Okay. Because the point is, you've got a virus that's not adapted to humans at all, and then you expose it to three selective environments that lead in the human direction: ferrets, because the ACE2 receptor, which this virus in particular utilizes, mm -hmm. um, is a match. Right. You've got human airway tissue, which is human, mm -hmm. and you've got humanized mice, which have been made more human-like for this purpose. Mm -hmm. So in that case, you take something that is remote that would need an intermediate host. Remember, we've never found the intermediate host in the wild that would explain how this virus got from bats to people, right? So what was the intermediate host? It was the laboratory with these three environments, mm -hmm. right? Okay, now the virus has spread around the world. Billions of people have been infected right? This is now a very well-adapted virus to people. If you take it to monkeys, it will evolve away from human adaptation. Maybe not very far, because mm -hmm. maybe monkeys are close enough, but it's not positive from the point of view of enhancing its infectivity of humans. So... It's like, it's like virulence or infectivity is a abstraction. And once infectious, you know, infectivity would apply equally to anything that you're talking about. It's like we, we know, and certainly the people who really know what's going on at Pfizer know this, that, right. you, know, you know, infectious, high infectivity in a human does not mean high infectivity in a cockatoo. Right. Right. So you could produce, maybe, in fact, I don't think it would work even, eh, you could produce a variant right, or maybe a few variants through this experiment in a small number of monkeys. But those wouldn't be useful variants from the point of view of predicting what the virus is going to do in people, which is why he says they're doing it, right? Mm -hmm. They want to know what it's going to do beforehand so that they can get ahead on vaccines. But that won't happen from this experiment as he described it, which raises the question of what exactly is going on here? And I think there are really three broad possibilities. One is, this guy's just shooting the shit on a date and he's making stuff up, maybe loosely based on something, but this is about the date and not about uh, biology. That it's nuts enough that it doesn't mean anything. Second possibility... Which is what he basically what he claims in his incoherent way when he is, it is revealed that it wasn't a date. Right? I'm right. a liar. Right. Right. So we will come back to that. Mm -hmm. um, the second possibility is that um, there is a absolutely monstrous explanation for what he's talking about that we can infer from what he said, but I'll come back to that. The third possibility is that he's not really very good at the biology at all and that he is reporting something real, but he doesn't get it enough to report it properly and that something is missing from what he said. Well, and, but also in that possibility is 
he was in a meeting. He was in several meetings, but he refers to a meeting that day, you know, the day of the date, uh, in which they were spitballing, right? That, you know, the, the Pfizer execs in the room with him were talking about what they might do. And, you know, he says it was a thought that came up in a meeting. And we were like, why do we not? It was like, well, we're going to consider that with more discussions. That, you know, that framing, and it's, you know, we're, we're so many levels deep here, it's really hard to know. But that framing does sound like someone who, given that what he says is fairly incoherent, that he heard some real stuff, it's going to impress a date. He, you know, heard conversation that uh, was just in the sort of nascent, well, let's talk about this. And no, those conversations, the people at Pfizer never want to get out there, of course, because they're terrible. Uh, but given that what he reports on this Project Veritas video doesn't make scientific sense, that does seem like it is a real possibility. A real possibility. Now, there's, of course, more to the story because Pfizer has finally responded. Yep. Um, but let's just let's just fill in the monstrous but unlikely possibility. Yeah. Okay. The monstrous but unlikely possibility is that if you change this virus in the lab by letting selection modify it in monkeys, and then it were released, and you know you knew that that was now going to be uh, spreading, and you had your vaccine ready, that could be. Um, a very effective but absolutely diabolical mechanism for making your products uh, necessary. Yep. Right? Now, I don't really put such a plan past Pfizer. After all, these people have been eager to vaccinate kids who aren't threatened by COVID with a vaccine that does threaten them, that doesn't seem to phase them. So I don't really think there's any moral obstacle to such a plan. But I don't think, the people at Pfizer may be a lot of things, but they're not dumb. And the thing is, if Pfizer was caught making new viruses that they would then have to release into the world, then that is going to make these people, you know, um, it's going to put them on a very short list of extremely evil people from history. And they don't have any reason to do it. They have a very good business model. It's immoral, for sure. But it's much safer than running that kind of risk. So I just don't see them pulling that kind of shenanigans because it's not in their interest to do it, right? They've gamed the regulators. They don't have to do this. They, they game the regulators. They've got the government mandating their product and buying it, right? This is like the, you know, this is the, this is the next level of organized crime. So that, I mean, that's, but to me, that's the crux. It would be extraordinarily evil, obviously, uh, but it would also be unnecessary at right. a business level. Unnecessary and, and very, very risky. Right. Yeah. Very risky. So, I don't think that that's what he's telling us. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't add up. Yeah. I will take a lot of convincing to believe that that's what they're up to. Mm -hmm.